So by this point, you know that I have a lot of favorite words from the Bible. <laughs> and one of my favorite words is a four letter word. It's no, it's not N-O, but K-N-O-W. In Greek, it stands for gnosko. And we're gonna talk about this word. It's a very important word when it comes to intimacy with Jesus. When I came across this word and had the desire to find out what the Greek definition was, it blew my mind. And I understand why Jesus said in John 17, three, in his prayer that they may know me. Really intense, really intense. So let's jump right in. In John 17, 3, Jesus says, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he's praying to the Father, but he's praying about us and for us. And he's saying, Father, I pray that they, us believers, the people of the Lord, I pray that they may know me and Jesus Christ, for knowing me is life eternal. That's what he said. He didn't say the prayer brings life eternal, the prayer of salvation bring. No, he said, knowing me is life eternal. John 17, three. What a gem of a verse. To know is not the English word, I have knowledge of someone. To know in Greek, in Greek, it. It's written really weird, but it's gnosko. And I'll put it right here for you to see it. There's gnosko. And it means to intimately know someone to the point of producing something. Let me explain. The scripture says that Mary did not know Joseph. Do you see where this is headed? It is intimacy. It's not just the knowledge, but the experience of someone when the two come together and produces fruit. And that fruit is the evidence of knowing. That's amazing. In Genesis, it says that and Adam knew Eve and gave birth. Look at that. When you know Jesus, you begin to conceive his nature and virtue. Now, what is the fruit of this consummation that, that only comes from knowing him? The fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I went to Sunday school. <laughs> and when you know him, the fruit of the Spirit begins to pop up as if you were a tree and you're abiding in the vine, right? In the book of John, it says, apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from knowing him, if you don't know him and regularly come to know him, then you're not even living, let alone in eternity when that time comes. This is what fascinates me about Christianity as I see it in the scriptures. It's not a ticket to heaven but it's a bridal invitation to enter into union with God through Jesus Christ. And this knowing and experiencing him is for all eternity. And this is life eternal. That's life eternal. If we have never experienced Jesus and we don't know Jesus, we've never lived a day. For those who have never experienced Jesus, and don't know him have never lived. And this is one of the reasons why my family and I opened up this nonprofit called The Face of Jesus, because we want the world to know. And so when you come before him in your alone time, while you are cultivating intimacy with him, you are entering into this knowing of Jesus and experiencing him. And when you step out of that moment, you're not really stepping out of that fragrance. 
I call it the indelible work of God. It's an artwork. It's like a mark or a smearing that is unrecognizable until you give a close look or there's a shift in per perception or change of lighting. You don't really see it until it's, it's highlighted by something indelible. You see what God has done in your alone time with him when you walk out and you start to conduct yourself differently. A car cuts in front of you in traffic or throws his hand out the window, you know what I mean? And Or situations are just not looking okay and you're not flipping out, you're not getting angry, you're not really getting frustrated, you're at peace. This is the indelible work of God that comes from knowing Him. The fruit of the Spirit is active and alive in your life. This is intimacy with Jesus. It's living, functioning, and moving in union with Him. I pray that blessed you. Let's keep on cultivating intimacy with Jesus together.